Hello everyone, I'm Raza Kiani. In today's lesson, I'm going to talk about circular motion and centripetal force. You are watching revision series of high school physics. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to recall and use the relation between force, mass, and acceleration. You will be able to describe the motion of an object in a circular path is due to resultant force, which is known as centripetal force. State the centripetal force of an object moving with constant speed acts towards the center of the circle. You should be able to explain the gravitational force provides the centripetal force needed to keep the planets and the satellites in their orbits. Uniform circular motion. When an object moves in a circular path with a uniform speed, the motion is called uniform circular motion. There is no change in speed during circular motion. Only the velocity of the object changes at every point of the circle. As the object is moving with constant speed, so it has constant kinetic energy during this motion. As the object moves with constant speed, so the acceleration is zero while moving along a circle, but its acceleration is not zero toward the center of the circle. If you look at this case, the acceleration is not zero for that one. So the, the centripetal force is acting toward the center and the centripetal acceleration is also acting toward the center. So the acceleration is not zero over here, but here the object is moving with constant speed. So here at constant speed, the acceleration of the object is zero. Now I'm going to explain circular motion with the help of some examples. Number one, the revolving of the moon around the earth, the orbiting of the earth around the sun, the motion of the car while taking a turn or moving around the roundabout. Number four, the motion of electron around the nucleus. Number five, the motion of the cyclist along a circular track with constant speed. Number six, the cyclist bends towards the center because the centripetal force is acting towards the center of the track. If you look at the diagram, we can show the track of the, of the cyclist, but the centripetal force is acting toward the center. So the force on the first cyclist is acting toward the center and the same way for the second one is acting toward the center. Centripetal acceleration. When a body moves around a circle with constant speed, the direction of its velocity continuously changes. Due to change in velocity at every point of the circle, the direction of the velocity also changes. In this diagram here, FC is the centripetal force that is acting toward the center. So whenever the centripetal force is acting toward the center, so the value of the acceleration is also acting toward the center and that acceleration is called centripetal acceleration. So to understand the centripetal force, first of all, we have to know that what is a centripetal acceleration? If Vi is the initial velocity at point V1, Vi, and Vf is the final velocity at point P2. So I can combine both these velocities. So Vi is acting in this direction, Vi, and the, the Vf is acting in this direction. And the change of the both velocities acting in this direction. And if I'm going to draw a line, so that is acting toward the center exactly. So wh what's happening here? If the change in velocity is acting toward the center, that means the acceleration of the object is also acting toward the center. So here is a formula for the centripetal acceleration, AC equals to V squared over R. This relationship shows that centripetal acceleration is inversely proportional to the radius of the circle. The planets closer to the sun, like Mercury, Venus, and Earth, move faster and the planets away from the sun like Uranus and Neptune move extremely slow. In other words, we can say that the planets with small radius has more acceleration 
and the planets with big radius, which are very far away, accelerates slowly. So this reality of the movement of the planet in the circular orbits prove that the acceleration is inversely proportional to the radius. In this animation, we can see that the closer planets, they are moving faster, and those, they are far away, they move slowly. The time taken to complete one revolution by the planet around the sun is called one year. It is also known as the time period of the planet. Mercury is the closest to the sun, so it takes 88 days to complete one revolution around the sun. Venus takes 225 days, and Earth takes 365.25 days, that is called one year, to complete one revolution around the sun. Mars takes two years, Jupiter 12 years, Saturn takes 29 years, and Uranus takes 84 years. Neptune takes 165 years to complete one revolution around the sun. So from here, that's pretty clear that acceleration is inversely proportional to the radius, to the distance. Centripetal force. The force necessary to move a body in a circular path is known as centripetal force. When a body moves in a circular path with uniform speed, it experiences a force directed toward the center of the circle. According to Newton's first law, if there is no force acting on the object, it will move in a straight line. But if there is a force acting on an object, so it will rotate in an orbit with a net force. This net force is called centripetal force in this case. So if I'm going to take one object over here, the ball revolving around us in a circle. So if that ball is going to break from the string, here is a string, okay, that has a radius R. If that is going to break and no air resistance acting, so what will happen to that object? It will go away with constant velocity. So in that case, the acceleration will be zero and that object will keep going far away. But if the, if the object keeps moving in a circle, so it's keep moving with changing velocity. So if that is moving with the changing velocity at every point, then it has acceleration acting toward the center and that acceleration is called AC. So according to Newton's second law, the acceleration and force, they act in the same direction. So I can derive the formula like here, again, if this is VI and the velocity and this is VF, so there will be a change in velocity. So the change in velocity always act towards the center. If the change in velocity is acting toward the center, that means acceleration. Why delta V over T is called acceleration. That means acceleration of the object is also acting toward the center. According to Newton's second law, because object is accelerating toward the center, so the centripetal force equals to M into A, centripetal acceleration. And from the previous relationship, we know that AC is what? V squared over R. So in this case, we can get M V squared over R. That is the equation for a centripetal force. Where M is the mass of the object, R is the radius, and V is the constant velocity with which object is moving along the circle. Gravitational force due to sun provides the necessary centripetal force to all planets to keep them revolving. If the sun stops providing centripetal force, Earth and other planets will fly away into the outer space in a straight line. If the string breaks, the ball flies away in a straight line. As the ball flies away in a straight line, similarly, in the absence of the sun, these planets they, they may fly into the outer space. The centripetal force is not existing itself. It is provided by an external source. In these diagrams, the two sportsmen 
are providing the centripetal force with the hands continuously. So they are pulling the balls toward the center and they are applying the force acting toward the center here. In case of a satellite, the earth is providing centripetal force. Similarly, as these sportsmen, they are providing the force toward the center. In the same way, in case of satellite, the earth is providing the centripetal force to keep it revolving in a fixed orbit. In case of solar system, the sun is providing the centripetal force to keep the planets revolving in their fixed orbits. Centripetal force compels the body to move in a circle and always directed towards the center of the circle. It is also known as center seeking force. Friction between the tire and the road provides the centripetal force. The centripetal force always act toward the center. If we consider this is the center, if we consider this is the center of the, of the circle, then the centripetal force of this car is acting toward the center this way. And in case of this cyclist, the force is also acting toward the center in this direction because the force of friction acts toward the center of the circle. In case of a car moving on a road, there is a force of friction between the tire and the road. That provides the centripetal force to act always toward the center. Very high speed vehicles at the roundabout might cause skidding very high speed cars at the roundabout might cause skidding due to weak grip between the road and the tires of the motorbike or the cars. The drivers use the centripetal force technique while drifting their cars intentionally over streets. Now we can practice some questions. A satellite orbits the earth above the atmosphere at a constant speed. The diagram shows the satellite at one point in its circular orbit around the Earth, which labeled arrow shows the direction of the resultant force on the satellite at the position shown. So we have a four positions here, A, B, C, and D. So the force of rotation is provided by the force of gravity of the Earth. And the Earth is pulling the satellite towards its center due to centripetal force. So the, the position will be D in this case here. Question number two, a car is traveling around a circular track at a constant speed as shown. In which direction is the resultant force of the car acting? The force of friction between the road and the tire provides the centripetal force. There's a force of friction between the tire of the car and the road. So, the direction of that force is always acting toward the center. So in that case also, the answer is B. Question number three. The diagram shows a satellite that is moving at a uniform rate in a circular orbit around the Earth. Which statement describes the motion of this satellite? A, it is accelerating because its speed is changing. B, it is accelerating because its velocity is changing. It is not accelerating, but its speed is changing. It is not accelerating, but its velocity is changing. So we are going to see the four options one by one. It is not accelerating because the speed is changing. We know that the speed remain constant throughout. That never changes of the satellite. So the option A is incorrect. It is accelerating because its velocity is changing. That's right, velocity at every single point changes. So that change in velocity causing acceleration toward the center. So that's the correct option, the one we have. C, it is not accelerating. No, it is accelerating toward the center. So that's also wrong. D, it is not accelerating, but its velocity is changing. Whenever there's a change in velocity, there is an acceleration, so that is also incorrect. So the answer is B in this case.
Question number four. An object travels in a circular path at a constant speed. Which statement about the object is correct? It has changing kinetic energy. That's not accurate because the speed is constant. We have a always constant speed. So that means we have a constant kinetic energy. It has changing momentum. Whenever we have a velocity, we have the momentum. So yes, change in velocity is momentum basically because momentum is a product of mass and velocity. So that answer is correct in this case. It has a constant velocity. No, velocity keep changing. So that is incorrect. It is not accelerating. No, it is accelerating always towards the center of the circle. So the answer is only B. The following first shows a model car moving clockwise around a horizontal circular track. So we have a model car over here that's moving in this direction on a circular path. A force acts on a car to keep it in a circle. Draw an arrow to show the direction of this force. The force is always acting toward the center. So that will be the direction of the centripetal force here. And we can add the arrow on. The velocity of the car increases. State what happens to the magnitude of the force. So when there's a change in velocity, there will be acceleration. So when there will be acceleration, there will be a force. So here's the answer. As the velocity increases, the acceleration of the car increases. As the acceleration increases, the magnitude of the force increases. The car traveled too quickly that leaves the track at P. On figure, on above figure, draw an arrow to show the direction of the travel after it has left the track. So here I'm going to draw the two arrows. The, the first is the direction of the car acting toward the center. And the second one, when it will move very fast, it's going to leave the track. So after leaving the track, it goes in a straight line by making a tangent. So it will go in this direction and we can add arrow on both to show the direction. In terms of the forces acting on the car, suggest why it is left the track at P. What is the reason of leaving the track? Here's the answer. Centripetal force is due to friction between the tires of the car and the circular track. If the force of friction is not enough, the car leaves the track and goes in a straight line. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel to spread the information to others.